Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey and this is the Council Minute for the week of November 15th. As I hope you know, last Tuesday was election day and Bloomington voters went to the polls to elect their mayor and council members and to weigh in on three ballot questions. Here's a quick summary of the results. First up, Bloomington voters selected their next city council. The results became official when they were canvassed at the Monday city council meeting. For the first time in the city's history, all of Bloomington's city council seats, including the mayor, were on the ballot. I am honored that I will be serving as Bloomington's mayor for the next four years. Jenna Carter and Saw Mua will return to their seats as at-large council members. Dwayne Lohman will again represent District 1. Sean Nelson was re-elected as District 2 council member. And Lona D'Alessandro will return to represent District 3. In District 4, we welcome a new council member. Congratulations to Victor Rivas, who was elected to his first term. Voter turnout was high. 35.91% of voters cast ballots in this year's election. That's the highest turnout for a regularly scheduled city election in 20 years, according to city clerk Christina Scipioni. You could say that voters were forward thinking as they cast their votes on the future of city facilities outlined in the Bloomington Forward Investment Plan. During this year's election, Bloomington voters approved a new half percent sales tax to provide $155 million for a new community health and wellness center, to renovate the 50-year-old Bloomington Ice Garden, and to enhance and protect the Nine Mile Creek Corridor and Moyer and Central Parks. I appreciate that our residents understand that when we invest in public health and wellness, recreation and natural resources, we're making Bloomington a place that people want to be. And we're boosting the local economy. By using a local sales tax, non-residents will contribute approximately 65% toward the cost of these projects. There were three ballot questions. Question one requested $100 million to replace the Creekside Community Center and public health buildings with a new community health and wellness center. Question one passed with 56% voting yes. Question two requested $35 million to modernize and update the Bloomington Ice Garden. 53% of voters voted yes on that question. And question three requested $20 million to restore more than 100 acres of prairie, creek, and woodland habitat and other outdoor park amenities in the Nine Mile Creek Corridor. Question three passed with 52% voting yes. In total, the city will invest $159 million to complete the three projects outlined in the Bloomington Forward Investment Plan. The sales tax will generate $155 million to finance the projects over a 20-year period. The remaining $4 million will be provided by the state of Minnesota. There's some administrative work to do, but the half percent sales tax increase could take effect on April 1st, 2024. Here's an overview of the next steps for each of the three projects. The first project slated for improvements is likely to be the Bloomington Ice Garden renovation. The city had been looking at the facility as a potentially phased project but ultimately, it was decided that the best way to do this project is all at once to minimize lost revenues. Construction could begin as soon as spring of 2025. The facility will close in the middle of March with the goal of reopening big at the end of 2025 in time for the next hockey season. Now that we know there is a funding source, the city can get started on detailed planning and development for the new Community Health and Wellness Center. There is a lot of community engagement and design work that needs to happen to determine what the elements of the new center will be. This will also include planning for what to do with the Creekside services during the construction. We want to be sure that the community has an active voice in this project. The city will start community engagement very early in 2024, and we hope to conclude much of that engagement and start the design planning process in 2025. The end goal is for the new center to open in 2027. The next steps for the Nine Mile Creek Corridor will also be community engagement. Parks and Recreation leadership will look at how they'll be doing that with the goal to begin the process early next year. The biggest issue we heard related to this project was the presence of bikes and whether there would be a bike path added to the Nine Mile Creek Corridor. The concern is making sure that we maintain the serenity in the area and protect and improve the natural areas. Once we have the timelines for community engagement opportunities for Nine Mile Creek and the Community Health and Wellness Center project, we'll be sure that info is on the city's website, social media channels, cable television, this program, and in the briefing. Also on Monday night, the council heard the last of the 2024 departmental budget presentations. We heard from community development, the IT department, and the city of Bloomington legal department. Community development's budget structure is a bit unique. A portion of the department's work is funded through the general fund, and that's what our discussion was focused on Monday night. Those divisions include assessing, building and inspections, environmental health, planning, and administration. The department also includes two authorities, the Port Authority and the Housing and Redevelopment Authority, 
And those are funded primarily from sources outside of the general fund. Discussion of those budgets are a separate conversation. After a record year of revenue from construction permits in 2022, the pace in community development is expected to slow in 2024. With that in mind, staff is requesting a budget increase of just over 2% for the divisions funded through the general fund. A good portion of that increase will go toward succession planning. Our current building official has announced his retirement and is slowly phasing out of his duties. The department hired a new assistant building official this past year who will ultimately take over the role as building official. Having the new person on board and learning under the current building official will be enormously beneficial as the transition takes place. New initiatives scheduled for 2024 include the kickoff of Hatch Bloomington in the spring and the opening of the Small Business Development Center later in the year. Both our IT department and our legal department are facing some significant budget pressures in the coming year. The folks who deal with the City of Bloomington information technology are busy. There are more than 850 end users in the city who use more than 150 different applications. And just to be clear, those users and the applications they use are providing services to the residents of Bloomington. They are also responsible for our GIS systems, data management, fiber optics, and of course, and probably most importantly, cybersecurity. IT is requesting budget increases to cover increases in software and hardware maintenance, network storage, and strategic plan initiatives. The workload in the legal department is equally challenging. People might not know, but our staff from our legal department actively prosecute criminal cases in addition to regular legal work. There are two additional staff members in the budget, one to deal with the processing of data that's needed for court, and a second that will be a restorative court social worker who is officially a Hennepin County employee, but the city does have partial funding obligations for that position. Both of those positions will be funded for the next two years through public safety funding the city received from the state of Minnesota. That's great for now, and it lessens the impact on the levy, but ultimately, those positions will end up as part of the general fund. With those discussions on Monday night, the departmental budget presentations are now complete. The council has a special council meeting next Monday on November 20th to discuss the budget and the annual truth of taxation hearing is scheduled for December 4th. That will do it for this week's Council Minute. Thanks very much for joining me today. Until next time, stay safe, Bloomington.